And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi everybody and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today we are going to make a buffalo chicken pizza that is easy to do and you can do any night of the week. And then to serve alongside that we're going to make a corn and red pepper saute. And for dessert we are going to have chocolate covered frozen bananas covered in whatever you want it to be dipped in. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. This is one of those things that even on your busiest day, you can come home and make for dinner in a matter of minutes, 30 minutes tops. I have here one of the best convenience products that I think exists in the grocery store. And that is a rotisserie chicken. You can buy them, generally speaking, for less money than you can do it for yourself at home. And it's so good and tender and moist. So I have one rotisserie chicken that I'm going to take the skin off because I don't want the skin. And I'm going to just take the meat off the bones. Now, if you have leftover chicken, by all means, use your leftover chicken that you may have at the store. But this is one of those things that if you have you know, just a few minutes, pop in and get it on your way home and you can fix a meal for your family. Or you can buy it, you know, on your grocery shopping day whenever you do your main grocery shopping and keep it in the refrigerator for a couple of days and then it's ready to go when you are. But I truly really have to think ahead sometimes and come up with meals that we can make when we get home after working all day. And if you're like me, you've got kids that are starving when they come home. So you got to have things there that they can eat or you know homework like I have to do with my boys we do homework every night and those kinds of things or maybe you don't have children but you, you just need to get dinner in a hurry and it, it just, it's just so easy and I mean it, it's got the flavors that the buffalo chicken wings have that everybody loves but only it's on uh, on a pizza and we're going to use I'm just getting the big chunks of meat off of here is what I'm doing first and then I'm going to you know, get it off the bones. I'm really just trying to get the meat off of the bone. And I am using both the white and the dark meat. You can use all dark meat if you want, or you can use all breast meat if you want. That That's totally up to you. I find, you know, some people are really strong dark meat lovers and some are white meat. So just use what your family will eat. And so we're going to just get the big chunks of meat off. You need about two cups or so, which these, this chicken was kind of small, so really it's probably going to be about all of the chicken meat off of this one. You could use turkey if you have leftover. This is a great use for leftover turkey. If you cook a big turkey, you know, very few families can eat a whole big turkey in one setting, so you can use the leftover turkey too. Would be delicious. And you can, you know, make the tr chicken fresh if you wanted to poach some chicken and have it ready to go or roast a chicken and have it ready to go. That's totally up to you. But I'm just using the rotisserie chicken because it's convenient and I think they're delicious. I love them and I use them often in different things. And sometimes I'll just buy the chicken and eat the chicken, make some, you know, fresh vegetables or something on the side or salad or whatever, and then just have the chicken. I love the little deli chickens. So we're just going to dice this up kind of you know, probably whoop, don't want that bone in there. A medium dice. You want chunks, but you don't want, you know, you want to think about bite sizes. So whatever you would call a bite size is what you want. And in this bowl right here, I already have it in here. It is just about half a cup of bottled barbecue sauce, whatever is your favorite, and then about a half to three-fourths of a cup, depending on how spicy you like it, of in the same section where you buy your barbecue sauce, you will find in a jar something called buffalo wing sauce. And that's what that other lighter color is, is just the buffalo wing sauce, which is basically um, 
hot sauce and butter, which is what a wing sauce is. My little Aaron, my youngest, loves wings. He absolutely loves hot wings. And that child, he's small, he's, he's, he's skinny, can, oh, he can eat probably 20 hot wings if you give them to him. He loves these things. So if you love the flavors of the hot wings, then this is the meal for you. I'm just cutting this chicken, and all I'm going to do is put this chicken in that sauce. I'm going to stir that together first, kind of mix those two sauces together. And then I'm going to add this chicken meat to that. I love chicken. I eat a lot of chicken. I don't want the skin on there. Now you don't want the skin because it will get flabby and greasy. And here's a bone. Make sure you pick out all the bones. So we're just dicing this up and then we're going to put it in that sauce. But we're going to stir that sauce together first. You don't really need to add any salt and pepper to this, I don't think. But if you really, you know, I'm not a real big salt person. Um, but if you want to add a little bit of extra salt to it, you can. Now, this is the sauce. If you, you know how pizza has sauce. This is the sauce. So we're just going to add our chicken to this. And really, you're just going to heat all this through on the pizza crust. Now, what, we're, what we are using for the pizza crust are the frozen, I mean, not frozen, excuse me, the, the pre-made up, already baked pizza crusts that you can buy where you get the spaghetti sauces and in the Italian section of your grocery store. You will find these. And I like them. They're just the pre-made up pizza crust. You can absolutely make your own if you wanted to. Or you could use the pizza dough that you buy in the section where you get the biscuits and stuff. But if you go that route, make sure you bake it first for, say, I don't know, 15 minutes to crisp up that crust because this really does only is going to heat through. So if you're going to use the kind that comes in the tube or your own homemade pizza dough and you want to bake it like that, as they call blind baking in, in cooking, means just bake it to where it, it's almost cooked through before you put your chicken on there. But I like these pre-done type crusts for just quick meals. Then we're just going to put this on our crust and spread it out. If you wanted to add some like minced up onion or celery to it, you could because, you know, traditionally uh, buffalo chicken comes with celery sticks and blue cheese dressing on the side. So if you wanted to saute, I would saute it first and add some cooked celery to this, you absolutely could. I'm not going to do that today, but you sure could if you wanted to. Just make sure you kind of get that chicken spread out over the crust. Oven is preheated 350, 375. I'm going to add some shredded Monterey Jack cheese on top. And I always line my baking sheets with, uh, in this case I'm using the uh, nonstick foil with parchment paper or something because it really makes cleanup much easier. So foil or parchment or something. Don't, you know, a lot, somebody asked me one time if they could substitute wax paper for parchment paper because they look a lot alike. You absolutely cannot. You cannot put wax paper in the oven. To prove that fact, I tried it one time just to see what would happen and it smoked up my kitchen. So it is true, you cannot use wax paper. Now we're gonna add, if I can, Remember where I put it? Here it is. Some blue cheese crumbles. I just buy the little package that has the crumbled blue cheese over top of our Monterey Jack because this is pizza. What does pizza have on it? Cheese. What does buffalo wings have on it? Blue cheese. So I'm going to add this whole container of blue cheese crumbles, which is about four ounces. This is going to go into the oven that is preheated and it's going to bake for about 20 minutes until the chicken is heated through and the cheeses are melted. I'm just going to get this in the oven, get this cleaned up, and when I come back, we're going to start on our side dish, which is corn and red pepper. I'll be back in just a minute.
and welcome back. Now our pizza is in the oven and we're going to let that bake for about 20 minutes or so until the cheese is all melted, the crust is crisped up, and the chicken is heated through. I am going to start on a side dish. I have a large skillet here and I'm going to melt, oh, about four tablespoons of butter because I think it just adds such good flavor to it. You know, and for quick meals, I keep a lot of frozen vegetables in my freezer at home. I find them when they're on sale and I buy them up and I keep frozen vegetables. There's some things I, I like better than others, but corn is one of those things that is delicious when it's frozen. You gotta remember, vegetables and fruits, what we're talking specifically about vegetables here, are picked at their peak of ripeness and processed and frozen you know, very, very quickly once it comes from the fields of the freezer, there's a short span of time there. Whereas maybe the fresh corn on the, the, the shelf of the refrigerator or the grocery store has been sitting there a long time or it's traveled a long distance to get there and it's lost a lot of its nutrients. So in many cases, frozen vegetables are healthier for you than the fresh ones that are out of season or maybe have to travel a long way. So keep frozen vegetables for quick, easy meals in your home. Now I have one onion, and this is a big onion, that we're going to dice up. And I, I just cut it in, cut the ends off, and then cut it in half to take off the peel. And I, I think I'm only going to use half this onion because it is a big onion. If you have a smaller onion, you would want the whole onion but we're just gonna mince it kind of fine while our butter is heating up. And then tuck your fingers and then just make a small dice. Could chop it in a food processor if you wanted to. And then a red pepper, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the onion. Now you don't wanna caramelize these vegetables, you're just softening them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my onion in my pan and let it be softening. I love cooked onions. They taste so good. Not a fan of raw, but love them cooked. Add a little bit of salt, about half a teaspoon or so, and some pepper. And we're going to dice up a red pepper. Now, if the red peppers don't look good, or maybe they're just a little pricey that day, then you could use uh, jarred roasted red peppers would be delicious in this or even the little cans of pimentos that you can buy in the grocery store, that would be fine too. But if the, if the red peppers are on sale or you better yet grow your own, this is a delicious combination. I think a match made in heaven, red pepper and corn to me just go hand in hand. But I happen to adore red peppers, so any chance I can get them and eat them, I do. If they're not, sometimes they can be pricey though, and you don't want to, you know, spend a fortune on them. So if they're on sale, get your fresh. If not, just use a roasted red pepper that you buy in the jar. Peppers, again, I've told you this before, but maybe you missed it. If you'll cut your peppers from the inside instead of the outside, they're a lot easier because that waxy coating can be hard to cut through if you're starting there with your knife. So if you cut them from the inside, they are a whole lot easier. And you want them about the same dice as your onion. And as you cut, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the pan with the onion. Work next to your stove, it's a whole lot easier. Saves you some steps. If you can, if you've got the space, do your chopping and things right by your stove. Red peppers are extremely healthy, very, very nutritious. I think it's vitamin C that a red, one red pepper has uh, all the vitamin C you need in a whole day. And they're sweet. If you don't like the green peppers, and so you've never tried a red pepper, the flavors are completely different. Yes, they are the members of the same family. And actually this kind of red pepper not pimentos and those things, but this kind of red pepper is simply a green pepper that's been left on the vine and fully ripened, and it turns sweet and delicious. So let's get our mixture kind of stirred up here. We're just gonna let that soften. Oops, I missed one. Let's take him out and cut him up. A 
let that kind of soften for just a minute and then we'll add our corn. Now we also are going to put some fresh herb in here and we're going to use just flat leaf parsley. If you don't have any parsley, don't worry about it. You don't have to put the parsley, but it adds a fresh flavor. I use the flat leaf parsley in a lot of things and it, it's not expensive at all to buy at the store. You can get a whole big bunch of it, wrap it in damp paper towels and keep it in your refrigerator and it lasts for a week, sometimes even two. I went to the refrigerator uh, this morning as a matter of fact to get something out and was cooking with my herbs and I, I had wrapped them in a damp paper towel and put them inside an unzipped zip top baggie two weeks ago and they were still fresh and ready to use. So you can, you know, buy your herbs even if you're not going to use them all at one time and then just wrap them in damp paper towels and they really will keep for several days up to two weeks or so in your refrigerator. Now I'm not going to add this right yet, but I'm going to go ahead and chop it while, I, while I'm doing my chopping, getting all my prep work done. That's a key step in cooking is getting your prep work done to where the actual cooking is just minutes. Now I'm going to add one bag, 16 ounces a pound of just frozen whole kernel corn. If it's corn season and you have fresh, cut it off the cob and use your fresh. But if it's not, just use frozen sweet corn and it's really good. And that's it for that. That just needs to kind of heat through and cook for oh five, six minutes or so. And then we'll add our parsley in there and it'll be done. You can add a little more pepper if you want to and I think I do because I like a lot of pepper in my vegetables. This is my little bowl here that we I showed you how to do this. We do the peppercorns in the spice mill or the little coffee mill. And just keep it in a little bowl there. Saves you from grinding because I like fresh ground pepper. I don't like the pre-ground stuff, but that is really good like that. So let's just turn this down and let it just simmer for about five minutes or so. And then when I come back, we're going to add our parsley in and we're going to start on dessert, which is your kids are going to love this. I'll be back in just a minute. And welcome back. Now our corn is done. We are just going to turn that down to low, keep it warm, and I'm going to add the parsley that we chopped just for color and flavor. And I've got a pan of water that I have brought up to a simmer. Doesn't that look pretty? Look at those colors. Mmm, and delicious. That's done. I've got a pan of water that I've brought up to a simmer and I'm going to add some semi-sweet chocolate chips to it. I'm going to add the whole bag. And then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of solid shortening. The reasoning for this is it helps liquefy the chocolate, but it also, when it cools down, helps it to harden without changing the flavor. So just a couple of tablespoons of that to a bag of your chips. We're going to let that melt. You could do this in the microwave, but I find if you just keep it over some simmering water, it really just melts in a matter of minutes. I'm going to let that water just sort of heat up that chocolate real quick. That's a little bit too boiling, so I'm going to turn it down. Now, I have some bananas that I have frozen, and I peeled them and I cut them in half, and I'm going to show you how we do this. Now, if you have popsicle sticks, you can use popsicle sticks. I didn't have any, but I always have these little skewers that you can get. They look like this, 
in the grocery store. I always have these in the kitchen because I use these for lots of different things. So keep the pointed end sharp and cut off some of the bottom end. And then I use two just for stability and then put them up inside the banana just like that so you can hold it. And that's all this is. It's just frozen bananas that I have peeled and I'm using two skewers a piece for stability. If you have a popsicle stick, you'll only need one. Then I'm going to melt my chocolate. I'm going to use my whisk to just dissolve the chocolate. See, it's all ready. This whisk is kind of big. Let me see if I can find my smaller, my smaller whisk does a better job than this big one for the moment. So I can get down in there. You just want that shortening to melt and then it melts the chocolate. And if you'll stir it, you might need a little uh, rag or something to hold on to the, the pot because it is, it is hot. Then it'll liquefy in just a minute and we're going to cover those bananas in the chocolate. Now here is a great thing to do with your kids. Let them choose, let's let that go for a minute more, whatever you want. I'm choosing today some coconut and then I've got some peanuts, just plain old peanuts. I'm going to cut them up a little bit finer, just salted, roasted peanuts, but you could use the little jimmies or sprinkles that you put on ice cream. You could use caramel. You could use white chocolate uh, to glaze over this with. You can use anything that you like, and any kind of nut. Think about an ice cream sundae. And what do you like on your ice cream sundae? And that's what kind of toppings that you want for your bananas. Mm. Get all of the, this part of it done before you start coating the bananas because you want to roll them in your toppings while the banana's chocolate is still hot. So I'm choosing today coconut and peanuts, but you use whatever you like. Now I think I can probably switch over to my big whisk and just kind of stir that around. You see how it turns from clumpy to glossy smooth in just a matter of minutes. So have your workstation set up. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my heat because my chocolate is done. Be careful. I would not let the kids do this part because that steam could really burn you. Now look, can you see this? How it went just to instant, smooth and beautiful in a matter of minutes. Take your banana, get yourself a spoon, if I can find one here, and hold your banana, dip it down in there, and then just spoon over the chocolate. Oh, look at that, how good. And then immediately go to whatever you like. Coconut is one of my favorite flavors, so I just have some bagged coconut. And you can do them however you want. I'll do another one to show you how to do them. I'll do it in peanuts. Take your banana, dip it down in your chocolate. Mm. Cover that banana as if that's not good enough. And then I'll do this one in peanuts. Take it immediately into the peanuts. This one's not, those skewers are not wanting to work. So let's help this one along. That's okay. And I may just do one side in chocolate too, or coconut. So there's peanuts and coconut together. Do anything you like. Coat your bananas. We'll do one more. Oh, so good. The reason for the freezing is so that it stays better on your stick. It doesn't matter if they thaw before you eat them. And then just take your peanuts and sprinkle over. Mm. And then just let it cool. And there you go. There are some bananas that we have frozen and just put in some delicious, delicious toppings and then let them cool and there you go. Our corn is done. Let's check on our pizza. 
All right, now our pizza is done, and here it is, and I just put it on my board, wiped off my board, and put it on there, and it's just golden brown. You might want to turn your broiler on like the last two or three minutes just to get that cheese melted and golden. Delicious. And here's our wonderful corn with red pepper and onion. And then here's our fun little chocolate dipped frozen bananas. And I did one over the break there just with some sprinkles so you could see how it looks with just the colored sprinkles on there. It really, you could do anything that you like on those bananas. Here's some great, easy, quick, family friendly, kid friendly recipes from Everyday Manna to you. Try the recipes and I'll see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.